Hey, Francisco with The Dev Life. Welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm going to talk about local storage. And if you're not familiar with local storage, it is a feature that is supported by all browsers. And you can leverage this feature to store data that will be persistent even after the browser is closed. Let me show you how you can use it. What I have now is a simple HTML page, uh, just displaying the text that you were seeing on screen just a second ago. And I'm also using a JavaScript file where I have the code um, that we'll be working with. I'm also using Live Server, which is a very popular plugin for Visual Studio Code. And you can tell that the application is currently running on port 5500. If we switch back to the browser and you look at the, at the port number where the application is running, you'll know that it is port 5500 that it's in fact being used. The cool thing about the live server extension is that it automatically refreshes as you save code. Uh, so let's go ahead and make a simple code change and let's make sure that it does reflect on the console log. Um, I already tested this and I'm pretty sure it's going to work, but I just want to go ahead and show you. Okay, so if we bring up the developer tools and we go to console, uh, we do see that we have hello world there. All right, so let's go ahead and get rid of that and let's see how we can store data into the local storage. And before we get too far ahead, let me explain to you what this code here is doing. So I'm pretty much adding a listener that will trigger this function uh, when the DOM content is fully loaded. So this will ensure that the HTML or the DOM is, is fully loaded before we try to do anything. Once the page is fully loaded, then the code inside this function will, will execute. As it turns out, storing data in local storage is very simple. You simply have to use this command, local storage, and we are going to set an item. The data is stored as a key value pair, so all you have to do is give it a key for the data that you want to store. So for example, you can call this my variable. Let's just call it my var. And, and this will be the value that will be stored for that key. One thing to watch out for is that you can only store strings in local storage. So if you want to store an object, we're going to have to do some more manipulation. But I'm going to show you how to do that shortly. How can you tell if the command actually works? Well, if you go to the developer tools on the browser and you click on application and you navigate to local storage, you are going to see the domain, in this case, the IP address of my local host and the port number, meaning this is an application that you are running. And here is the data that you have stored. Uh, now, there is a way that you can clear out whatever is in local storage just by simply doing this. And that will clear out whatever data you have stored in local storage. You can also do it using code. So for example, if you want to remove the variable or the key value pair that we just added, we simply need to use the remove item method. And specify which key is the one that you want to remove. I'm going to go ahead and set a debugger here so we can see the code before it actually executes. At this point, we have set the item. So if we go and verify that the item has been set, you'll see it here. Uh, so now let's, let's step through the code and let's get it to the point to where we call the remove item method to make sure that the data is in fact removed. Now the statement has executed. So at this point, we have already called the method. Let's make sure that the data is gone. And in fact, it is gone. So that's simply how you add and remove objects from local storage. As I mentioned before, if you add an item or if you add a, a key value pair and you close the browser and you reopen the browser, the data will still be there unless you manually go in here and remove it or you write some code to specifically remove that data from local storage. So, so far we know how to set items and remove items, but what about objects? What if you need to, or you want to store an object? Let me show you what you would do in case you wanted to store an object and read it back out. The first thing we will need to do is create an object and I'm going to call this my car and I'm going to add a few properties to this car object. So the first one is going to be make. And the make is going to be Honda. And we're also going to add model. And that is going to be a Civic. And we are going to add the year. And that will be 
let's say 1998. Okay, so now we have an object. Um, as I mentioned before, we are not able to store objects directly into local storage. So what we have to do is that we have to serialize the car object um, to be able to store it. So let's go ahead and do that. And to serialize an object, we need to call this method JSON stringify, and then we pass in the object that we want to serialize. Let's run the code up to this point and let's put a debugger here and let's see what's going on. So if we go back to the browser. Oh, wait, did I not save it? There it is. So I just had to refresh. I don't know what happened there. So as you can tell, the value of my car serialized looks slightly different than what it looks as an object. So that's exactly what we want to see. My car serialized is not considered a string. So now we should be able to store it with no problem. Okay, so let's get rid of this debugger here. And we are going to call this my car. And the value, as you guessed, will be my car serialized. And let's change this to my car in case we want to delete it. And we'll leave that, that breakpoint there. Okay, let's save it and let's refresh. Okay, so so far we serialized the object and we are setting the item. And that is the item that we're setting. So now let's verify that in fact it is set in local storage. Okay, so there you can see the value that's actually stored. The way it looks, it looks like this is an actual JSON object, but in fact it's a string. So let's go ahead and read it out. And actually, we should be able to just do it right here from the console. So if we go local storage, get item, and let's get um, my car, you can tell that this is a string. So this is not a valid object. So if you were to do something like this, this would break because it is a string and it does not have a make property. So what do we need to do in this situation? So let me walk you through a use case. So let's say that you are building an application that um, it's an e-commerce app and the user left some items in the cart. And so the cart might have an array or a collection of objects um, or items, right, that you have to offer in your application. Um, but let's say that the user had to leave and they closed the browser, but you still want to retain the items that they had previously added to the cart, right? So when the user opens the application again, you want to pull those items back out and put them in the shopping cart. But to be able to do that, you will have to you will have to read them from local storage and you will have to parse the object or collection um, which, whichever way you stored it. So now let's say that before the application was closed, we stored this my car object and we want to pull it back out. Um, for whatever reason might be in your in your application or in your use case, but we want to be able to pull that my car object as a JSON object, not as a string. So let's go ahead and try that. I'm going to go ahead and leave the remove car uh, statement there. So the next step that we want to do is we want to be able to read the key value pair stored in local storage and convert that into an object. Okay, so. And as you can tell, the variable names that I'm using are very long, but I just want to make sure that I'm being descriptive and you understand where, where the data is coming from. Okay, so at this point, this value should be the same value that we that we stored in local storage. So this is a, it's a string. So the data is serialized and we want to parse it into an object. I'm going to go ahead and put a debugger here so we can step through the code. And the next thing would be that we have a my car object, my car local storage objects, meaning that this object came from local storage. And for that, we use json.parse. And we pass a string that we just pulled from local storage. Let's go ahead and print this out to the console log. So let's walk through the steps that we did. So again, right, we defined, we have the, we created the micro object, we serialized it, 
we stored it using my car as the key. And then here we are reading, reading it back out. We're saving it here. So as you can tell, this value here, my car serialized and my car local storage value are the same. So pretty much we put them in as a string into local storage and we pulled it back, back out as a string. And the next thing we're going to do is that we are going to parse that string into a JSON object. Apologies if I'm sounding very repetitive, but I just want to make sure that you understand uh, what's going on. Okay. And so now, as you can tell, now we have converted the string into an actual object. And you can see that it even says object right at the top. And you can see the different properties that we added originally. This is pretty much the same thing that we said up here. Okay, so now we printed it. And you can see there, there is the object. So that's pretty much all that is entailed when it comes to storing and reading data from the local storage. Another thing that I would like to touch on is how, what do you do when you need to update an item that's already there? So let's say that, that your Civic is not a 1998 anymore. Let's say that your Civic is a, is a 2023. Um, so how would you go about doing that? Okay, so let's, let's go ahead and write a little bit of code to do that. So here we're writing to local storage. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and put a debugger here just so we can catch the things as they, as they happened. And apologies if you're able to pick up the noise. Uh, somebody decided to mow their lawn. Um, hopefully my microphone is not picking it up. What we need to do, so here we have my car set as a 1998 Civic, and then we go ahead and we store it as a 1998 Civic. And what we are going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and change the value of my car um, or the year. And I'm going to set that to uh, 20, 2023. Okay, so at this point, what we have in local storage is 1998. So what we need to do is that we need to go ahead and rewrite it, meaning update the value again. So therefore, we need to run this, this two lines uh, one more time. So this anymore and we're going to step through the code so I can show you step by step what's going on. So let's go ahead and run the code. Uh, so let's go ahead and stop this and restart it. Okay. So now at this point, we should have a 1998 civic in local storage. And if we continue stepping through the code, um, at this point I have updated my car so now my civic is a 2023 civic so i'm going to go ahead and we are going to serialize that value again convert it into a string so if you can see here the string does say that it is a 2023 and we are going to set the item again so here's a sequence of events here so if a key value pair does not exist in local storage it is going to be set for the first time but if the key value pair already exists it is going to simply be updated. And this is exactly what is going to be happening here. So if we run this, this line again, line 21, and we go back to local storage, you'll be able to see now that the year is not 1998 anymore. It is 2023 as we had said it. So if we continue to the next step, everything else is going to run the same way. So now when we pull it back out, it is going to be pulling the value with the 2023 year already set correctly to 2023. Okay, and let's go look at the console and there we have it. So now we have year 2023. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section below and I will be happy to read them and get back to you. In case. If you found this video useful, please don't forget to like and subscribe and hit the notification bell so you get notified when we publish new videos. Thank you. Catch you in the next one. I guess it's my landscape guy. Perfect timing. Hey, don't forget to watch that video.